Hey, how's it going? Welcome to Loop Learning. This is next video in the series. We are making um, the POS management system. In previous video, I've demonstrated how to put uh, together this structure. Now in this video, we are going to work on how do we make it functional? How do we make it uh, more useful? We will beautify a little bit. So this video and the next video as well, I'm hoping that it will be on this form because this is a major form which will be used uh, by, 90, by users 90% of the time who will be using this application. So we need to pay attention. We need to do all sort of uh, uh, coding and build functionalities for making things easier for the users. So let's make it functional. But before I do that, I want to ask if you are new to my channel, welcome if you are returning. Welcome back in any case, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, make sure you do hit the bell icon so you get notification whenever I upload a new video. You can see there is a little bit of a problem in terms of uh, scaling. For example, you know, this uh, form is a little bit on the top. This one is also on the top. This one is middle one is in not really in the middle. So we'll fix these issues and then later on, will make it a little bit more functional. So let's bring it on the top. Okay. And I think now this is okay. But I want to make this form moved a little bit on this side. All right. So I think this is enough. Now, the idea in this video is that I want to um, create a functionality that if a user tap or click on the category name, the relevant records get filtered in the products form. You know what I mean? So the uh, we are going to build this functionality. So we, we can use uh, SQL. I think uh, that will be much easier uh, to build the functionality. Right now, this form is actually a bound form. So that's why the data is appearing without any tap or click. So we need to make this form as the unbound form, then we will uh, write a VBA, one line of VB code for uh, this uh, category. Okay, so we'll go back to design view and we will uh, make this form unbound form. So let's go here, see products T table as a bound. So we'll uh, click here and then we'll go to the event tab on click event dot 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 code builder. And here we are in VB editor. So the idea is that we a uh, user clicks here and this form gets filtered based on the category ID. That's the unique ID in both of these forms we have. Okay. So we're going to use that uh, category ID. Now, if I want to refer to this form, although they are located in the same main uh, form called POS, but still, when I'm writing the code, I have to refer to this form properly. So this is how I refer forms. And then I gave a name of the form. And then I gave which sub form we are talking about. So sub form is list products dot form because this is a form and now we are going to further go ahead and define that we are actually defining the record source of this form so this is how we are going to do it all right now equal record search equal double quote double quote and we are going to write a simple sql statement select statement select asterisk meaning everything from where from the table called products t that's the table name but we have to have a criteria where clause where what category id this is why i said right the so category id is the unique id in both of the columns uh, both of the form category id equals ampersand um for example category id equals double quote double quote ampersand me dot txt category id and that's about it that's it now if you're wondering how did i come up with txt category id well in this form if you notice there is one field hidden here and that's txt category id i don't know I can't grab it but there is yeah this is the one okay category id so we are referring to this id and we are filtering this uh, record based on that so let's go ahead and check it out you can see that. Don't worry about this. This will uh, later fix it. Um, we'll click on food and there you go. Now, there's only one record and one category. That's why we don't see multiple entries happening here. Why don't we put two buttons here? For example, we have a button here and we have a button here. Those buttons will be, will be used to create a product, will be used to create category. You know, we can do that as well. Okay. So let's go ahead and add a button so let's say i have already have button here or i'm going to go to the format design we're going to get the object 
and we are going to give a name add product okay and uh, we'll have a plus sign which is actually a append query uh, sign and we're going to make it uh, white color and we are going to change the styling and we are going to change the name uh, sorry the font and we are going to change the font size as well okay great now we'll see if okay i know this too much going on in a small screen uh, sorry for that but hopefully you are following what i'm doing okay so we'll make this uh, the line thickness will make it uh, transparent so we don't see any outline whatsoever okay so if we'll go now we have this add product a little add product button right there so let's make it functional okay here we go okay now we can give a name btn add product now i'm We'll do the styling later on. We'll make it functional first. So we do have, you know that we have created a products F form. So we do have product. So we'll go to the on click event, dot, 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 code builder, and we will open the form to cmd dot open form. The form name is products F. There you go. Okay. Now let's go ahead and go to the form view. Let's create a product and we're looking at food category. So for the food category, we can have, let's say, uh, um, what else? We had, um, come on, I, I'm forgetting the fruit, food category. That's weird. Okay. Uh, basmati rice. <laughs> and the basmati rice are very tasty <laughs> something like that of course we are making dummy data categories food cost let's say ten dollars for five kg i don't know i'm just making it up and the sales price is six seventeen dollars available let's say one piece is available create that and if i will click here we can see now fresh fruits and basmati rice now we have two records right how about adding a category the way we have added the product so let's go back let's copy this instead of you know add we'll say create right i think that makes more sense and we'll bring this search bar on the uh, little left side so it is on the left side okay so I think create product makes sense. All right, so let's do the same for the category. We'll bring this on the left side. I know the space is very less. And we'll paste right here. And we'll say category instead of product. And the space is issue right here. Anyway, we'll fix this. As I said, we will beautify it, make it more uh, useful. Later on, we'll do that but let's just focus on making it functional. So we'll change the name as well, add category. Okay, go to the event tab, on click event, dot, 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 code builder. And, oh, hang on a second, not, yeah. So we do have categories F. Do cmd dot open form categories f there you go that's enough so we'll go back here and we come here create category and we create another category so instead of food last time we created food now let's create um a category of um, household items all right save that okay now create a product and what household item we will have let's say utensils i don't know just randomly the utensils are the key items all right category now we'll see two categories household item cost let's say 
19 selling price is 25 26 available maybe four save it okay now we do have two categories all right so but they are not presented here so let's close because uh, there is right now there's no refresh button or i did not build any auto refresh functionality which will do that slowly slowly you know we are just building this uh, feature so if i'll click on household item we get only one item product but if i click on food we get two items so you see it's a bit more functional so it is filtering the data or information based on what category i'm selecting from the categories form now obviously we'll make it more smarter more usable uh, and more good looking as well with the passage of time but this is what i wanted to demonstrate that how we can actually build this functionality now before i um, go away and switch off this video uh, video recording i think let's do one more thing i think we will click on add to order and we will add the product into our sales item but before we do that we have to create a sales order right then only we can um, add the product once the order is created we can then add the product so how we are going to do it let's go to let's figure it out so for sales we have to choose customer we have to provide the user id information okay and then we have order date that should be automatically fetched and whatever amount that is being uh, whatever uh, product that is being added and the count of the product that is being changed the total amount discount and net amount should automatically be updating so first of all let's build this functionality of converting these um, text boxes into the combo boxes okay so we'll go to the design view we select this we go to change to and we say combo box and we'll bind this row source to the customers table okay so we do have customers table customer id email status now we don't need actually email and status we only fetch the customer name and two columns are there so we'll go to the form format we'll say first one hide it and then the other one show it same we will do with the user id okay we'll go to data tab we'll bind this to the users table so user id and full name there you go and we'll come to the format two columns zero and one now the other thing i want is i want the sales id to be automatically obviously it's a auto number so automatically it will be created the moment i choose the customer id um, it should automatically create a record it should give a sale date and the total amount zero because that's where it is going to begin and the status also should be new order something like that so let's go ahead and uh, make that change okay so we'll say me dot and what fields we are updating sale date me dot sale date equal format and we will say now and we'll give a format date day month and year okay uh, what else what else we are updating uh, total amount me dot oops me dot total amount it would be zero that would be starting amount and then we have status me dot status equal and we'll build that function uh, we'll say it it's a new order okay so that's there now I want to build a feature which we can use so you can see that user and uh, the customer details are appearing if i if there is no sales order and user clicks here it should throw an error it says hey first create an order then you can create the order lines so let's build that functionality as well so we'll go to add to order dot 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 code builder and here we are we'll refer to this form remember forms pos exclamation mark what's the name of this form so it's called sales f and dot form dot um, sale id okay 
So what we are saying, if this sale ID equal if is null equals true, then do cmd dot beep. Oops, <laughs> message box. This action cannot be performed. Create a sales order first. Okay, we be critical and it would be information. Else, uh, well, right now we are going to only test this functionality. All right, so let's go ahead and check it out whether this works. And yeah, this action cannot be performed. Create a sales order first, which means this has to be created. Then we can add uh, the sales line. So let's go ahead and test this. There you go. We have a order number. We have order date amount. Discount would be zero. I think we'll put zero here as well. So the zero amount automatically gets uh, updated. So this is what I want to demonstrate. In the next video, we'll make it more functional. We'll add photos. We are going to make this form as full fledged functional, beautiful form. And um, and you will, I'm sure you will like it. Until now, if you are liking whatever you're seeing, smash the like button. If you have learned something, make sure that you smash the like button and tell me in the comments below as well. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.